basically it's a map showing the property and the, it's going to give you contour elevations. So it's also elevation data as well as your X and Y data, grading features, that sort of thing, as well as the power poles are going to show up tree line. If you're doing a topographical survey, you're doing some sort of development or you're you're going to improve a property in some manner. So you need to know where those easements are. And how exactly are you taking these measurements? Is it measuring it from sea level up? Correct. So it's mean sea level and it, there's multiple datums, but the most current datum is NAVD 88. So that's your mean sea level for North America. And what kind of tool are you using to do this? So a lot of it's GPS. We're also going to use a total station which measures angles and distances because once you get into the foliage, GPS doesn't work anymore. It's trigonometry and coordinate geometry. Survey grade GPS, for our setup, we're going to use a base station which fixes a point on the earth. And then we use a radio signal and we've got a rover pole. Using that radio signal, it gives us a correction vector from the base station and it tells us the distance from where we told it it was when we started the base and where it says now. So that gives you kind of pinky type accuracy, I guess would be the best way to say it. When I look at like those nationwide topographic maps, how useful is that compared to this? The nationwide maps or even like the countywide maps, mm -hmm. they're good for getting just a rough idea. Mm -hmm. You know, you could come up with a conceptual plan because you can say, okay, I can't build a road down that hill, it's too steep. But as far as designing, mm -hmm. you need to be more accurate. There's always going to be error in measurements. Mm -hmm. There's no way to eliminate it. Most of the stuff you're going to be dealing with, your vertical is probably going to be a tenth of error. Mm -hmm. Horizontal will be less than that. I'm talking survey dimension. So one hundredth of a foot is roughly, it's a little bit smaller than an eighth of an inch. Okay. So it's, it's within it's, that it's, amount of... It's there. very accurate. Okay. Is Google Earth something that one can rely on to figure out the accuracy of... It's a good tool, mm -hmm. but as far as creating a map that you could work off of, it's not good enough. Partly because you don't know where your property lines are in relation to those contours. Mm -hmm. The other issue you run into with like LiDAR is you could hit the top of that marker over there uh -huh. and it wouldn't, wouldn't know the difference between that and the ground grade, which is now two feet lower. Not going to be as accurate as boots on the ground. It won't pick up things like gas valves or mm -hmm. gas markers. Sure. But it's, it's a good tool to yeah. start things with. How many different points of measurement are there in this amount of... So usually what we'll do is, if it's relatively flat, mm -hmm. like out here, we're mm -hmm. going to do about a 50 foot grid. Mm -hmm. Every 50 foot we'll put a point. If you've got more hilly areas where you've got banks, mm -hmm. it's going to be much tighter than that because you have to hit the top of bank mm -hmm. and the bottom of bank. On this site I probably have about a thousand points okay. of data. So how long does it take to do that kind of survey? At least a day. <laughs> really? Holy oh yeah. Cow. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. It's a lot of area to cover. What affects the cost of this kind of survey? Some of it's going to do with how much work the surveyor's done in the area. Because mm -hmm. he's already got. If I already have information, mm -hmm. it's going to cost you less. Does it also have to do with the distance that you are away from the site? Yeah. So you'll have some drive time on a job. You're going to be there the whole day. That's not, it's not such a big thing if you're, you know, not two or three hours away. Mm -hmm. It's also going to deal with okay. There's a lot more trees here. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you more because I can't just GPS the whole thing. Different types of measurement take different amounts of time. Yeah. Do you guys ever worked with uh, like an unmanned LiDAR system, like a drone? You ever so done? we don't actually have a drone at our company. We have used other companies' drones for sites like a, a gravel pit where there's no trees, everything's to the dirt, and accuracy is not that important. They want a rough idea for volume. Does that cost less to get those kind of... It's, it's quicker. I'm not entirely certain it's cheaper all the time. In some cases, probably yes. Other cases, it may or may not be. Why do people order these surveys? Like, is it because they're about to build something and they want to make sure it's, I don't know, like, what's the reason why people do them? It's, it's always because you're going to design something. If you're going to build a building or say you're going to split out parcels. Other reasons are is when you're building, you need to know where your stormwater runoff's going. So you can put up silt fences. Do people ever start building without getting into the survey? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. People start building without a permit sometimes, so <laughs> I don't know if that's a fair question. If it's a simple piece of property, you don't need a topographical survey. Yeah. Say you've got an in-town lot, you want to build a house, the lot's flat, you know you're just going to have to build up from the ground, raise it up a foot. You don't necessarily need a topo. But if you've got a more difficult site where you're dealing with, okay, am I going to be able to get a walk out here? or is this hill too steep? Where am I going to set the house? Is the driveway too steep? Anytime you need to start designing, looking at what slopes are going to be, what your elevations are at, anytime you have to deal with a floodplain, then it's important. At what point are the elevations so steep that you can't build something on it? Like, is there such a thing? 
anything can be engineered, it's just a matter how much you want to spend to build it. Yeah. What does a topo survey not tell you? It can only tell you what we see on the ground. So if the underground utility guys don't mark something, we're not going to be able to locate it. It's not going to tell you what's been buried years ago unless somebody's told you, okay, this is an area, there's an old barn here, it tipped it over, buried it under the ground. And it's also not going to give you your environmental data, mm -hmm. like if there's pollution in the water or in the soil. Okay, gotcha. So no like, septic tanks, no underground gas tanks, right. if it's not marked, you'll never know. Correct. Okay. Sometimes you can tell where a septic tank is in the drain field, but not always. And if there's a woolly mammoth, you can't tell me that either. No, <laughs> no woolly mammoth. Okay.